I'm Bob Harris, the president of the Decorative Concrete Institute. When it comes to working with a non-breathable system like 100% solids epoxy or a high solids polyurethane, you better understand the importance of not only preparing your concrete surface properly with the right profile, but you also need to understand the correlation that moisture has relative to a non-breathable system. Two ways that we check for uh, MVER, which stands for Moisture Vapor Emission Rate, is what we call the tape down test. Now, the tape down test is an actual ASTM standard that uh, what you do is you come down onto your concrete surface. It cannot be sealed, so if you have sealer on the concrete, you need to remove the sealer first. But generally, you take a clear piece of 6 mil visqueen, 16 inches by 16 inches, you find an inconspicuous area, and you totally seal the perimeter of this uh, plastic. So you tape it down, making sure that you're using a non-breathable tape, such as duct tape, and what you're doing is totally sealing the outside perimeter of your plastic. In order for this test to conform to that specific ASTM standard, this test needs to stay down for a minimum of 16 hours. So typically that's the next day. When you come back 16 hours later or the next day, you simply peel back your plastic. And what you're looking for is you're checking to see if condensation has formed on the under uh, part of the plastic or if there's a big dark square, which is an indicator that there's excessive moisture. And if that's the case, you take it to the next step and possibly the, consider the use of a, uh, a moisture type product that's going to remedy that. The next test kit that we use is called a calcium chloride test and again this is an actual ASTM standard. It's a pretty neat little test because it's all self-contained. It comes ready to use and in the kit you get a variety of applications. Number one you get the instructions and it'll give you a formula inside. You don't need to remember the formula because it is a fairly long formula but you need to read the uh, instructions. Very important. But also you'll see it has the petri dish that's filled with calcium chloride or anhydrous material. Also, you'll see uh, an envelope, and the envelope is put in here for a reason. And the reason is, is once you've conducted your test, you could, if you chose to, seal the lid off, put a piece of tape around it, put it back in this envelope, and also this manufacturer will give you um, a, a, an address. You write your name right here where it says from, and you simply stick it to here, you can send it off to this manufacturer and they'll give you the reading of how much moisture vapor is emitting through the slab. Now the industry standard is three pounds of moisture vapor emission rate in a thousand square feet in 24 hours. And if you're testing the proper way, it's going to require a minimum of three of these kits in an area of about a thousand square feet. So you'll notice right here, it gives you on this test kit, it says dry weight and it says 33, and the 33 represents grams. And then it'll say the start time, so you would monitor your start time. It'll say the end time, and the finished weight, and the number here. So you simply come over and you take the lid off, be very careful uh, on an unsealed portion of the concrete, and then you'll notice, just like uh, the tape down test where we use duct tape to seal the perimeter, we're also gonna seal the perimeter with this adhesive backed tape, making sure no moisture can get either in or out. And you simply stick it down to the surface. In order for this uh, test kit to conform to that ASTM standard, this needs to stay down for a minimum of 60 hours and no longer than 72 hours. So your window of opportunity is 60 to 72 hours. Also what you'll do is with this kit, once you've stuck this down, you can see in this self-contained box, you simply fold it over and you see the words caution. You put the tab through here, tab through here, and you simply place it over the test kit. And this is an indicator that you are in fact uh, conducting a test caution. And one last tip is go ahead and put a piece of tape here to hold it into place so nobody kicks it out of place. Once the test has been down for a minimum of 62 hours, no longer than 72 hours, we make sure that the test is still intact, meaning it's not uh, been kicked out of place. And if it is still intact, we come over here, we remove the adhesive back seal, and we take our lid, and you make sure that it's attached on tightly. We note the time of day and the date, and we write it on the cap. I like to go ahead and take a little piece of tape 
It can be scotch tape or anything just to make sure that uh, it, the lid is in fact intact. Then what I'll do is pop it into my uh, envelope and send it off to the manufacturer and they'll give me the calculations. This is really important to make sure that your uh, non-breathable system, like we talked about, the epoxy or the urethane, um, is not going to fail. So this is really important. Another important aspect of this self-contained kit is what we call the pH test. And a lot of applicators in the decorative arena don't understand the importance of understanding pH and, and why that's important. pH level of the concrete, and by the way, uh, concrete, just the inherent nature of concrete has a pH of probably somewhere between 8 and 10 is the natural pH uh, of the concrete. pH is uh, neutral, that is considered a 7. Water is a pH of neutral 7, that would be uh, neutral. But what we do is we simply put a, roughly a 1 to 2 inch diameter of water on the concrete. We submerge the tip of this test tab for about one second is all it takes. Then we pull it out there and then uh, it'll change colors. And once it changes colors, we simply align it right over to here. We're shooting for a pH of somewhere around 7 before we uh, uh, apply our epoxy coating. And why is that important? Anything higher then a pH of 7 is considered alkaline and anything lower than a pH of 7 is considered acidic. And so what that means is you may, you may need to either uh, take it back down with a slight acid wash if it's too alkaline or you may need to neutralize if it's too acidic with the ultimate goal being a pH of 7 for your coatings. Remember, to get the most out of your tools, use them properly and more importantly, use them safely. I'm Bob Harris.